right guys, I'm continuing on my canning 101 or whatever. Remember, I am not a professional. This is the way I do it. I'm also not here to say you're doing it wrong or your grandma didn't know what she was doing. It's a wonder you didn't die. I'm not here to do that. I'm not, I, I don't want to change anybody's way of doing anything, so please remember that. Um, I'm going to try to remember when I do things against the rules. You know, because they say, and that brings up an interesting question, just exactly who are they? Have you ever noticed that? We always say, well, they say, who's they? Well, all right, let's get on. So, I'm not here. I'm not to tell you what to do. I'm sharing with you what I do, but I gotta look it up to make sure. The references that I, if you're a, um, you have, you like to read, I would recommend that you use the Ball Blue Book of Home Food Preservation or Canning, whatever. But it's the Ball Blue Book. I, I don't have a Ball Blue Book. I, I just, I'm a visual learner, hands-on visual learner. So, um, but the website. And the Safe Canning Gurus. It's the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I will try to leave, remember to leave a link in the in the description box. I want you guys to be safe. And like I said, this is the way I do things. Um, some of these things I've learned from the website. Some of these things I'm old and I'm stubborn, and I'm gonna do it my way. So, like I said. All right, anyway, usually what I do when I'm done, uh, finished canning, is you, you take your uh, jars out of the canner. You either tighten the lid, let it sit, and listen for ping, 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 ping. Um, you want no drafts, so don't have a fan blowing on them. Everything needs just to come down naturally. And then um, I let it set overnight. And then the next morning, I remove all my rings, I wash my jars, I label them, and, um, wash my rings. I do not put the rings back on. I used to. I've had uh, a lot of people uh, say, Barb, my mom always left her rings on, and you're supposed to leave the rings on. Well, that's one thing I did learn. You, you really need to take the rings off. I know that there are people that dry everything really good and put it back on and they will admit it's all for peace of mind on their own but uh, one of the things that I um, overheard or something somebody say but what if your jar gets knocked and the seal comes off well if that happens your seal wasn't very good anyway and to just to show the reason you take it off is um, you don't want that lid to stay on there with the ring and the seal break and you not know about it. Uh, I came down the other day, I do this frequently, maybe once a month or two or three times a month, and I check the seals. My seals every month or two and make sure they're still good. I don't want anything to go bad. So I take the rings off and label the jars. Do not stack your jars. Same thing. If you stack your jars, the jar on the bottom, the seal may break and you're not gonna know about it. Um, so leave your jars individual. Those are uh, two of the things that we do right away. Now, I'm almost embarrassed to show you my pantry, but I will show you one set of shelves. Uh, currently, I have one, two, three sets of one, two, three, four, five shelves. They're just shelves. They're just cheap plastic. I don't even know where we got them. Um, probably Menards or something like that. Um, I also have a ref uh, an extra refrigerator here. I have an upright deep freezer that I want to get rid of. Um, I really miss my chest type freezer. We bought that because we thought we're getting older. There's not a thing wrong with it, but we thought we're getting older and we won't have to stand on our head any longer to get food out of the bottom of the freezer. Apparently I like standing on my head because I want a chest type. But then I have this an antique um, what can I say guys antique china cabinet over here I want to sell 
just haven't gotten around to doing it. But it's got I store food in it. And then behind me is the matching buffet that I use to store items in as well um, that I want to sell. I just got all this stuff down here I want to sell and haven't gotten right. To, um, don't, really don't know how to do it. So Okay, so then um, I'll turn around at the end and show you my pantry. When we travel, I um, bought one of these. It's meant to go like this, put them on the inside, but it works well for us. We double, ah, spider, two spiders. We set this um, under the bed in the RV, and then that way I can put 24 jars, and typically the meat goes in these under the bed in the RV. And then in the pantry of the RV, I... So far, knock on wood, we've done just fine. I put all of my jars in there. Um, everything is in a jar. From um, my canned vegetables and soups to um, my flour and sugar, brownie mix, all of that. It's all stored in jars in my pantry. The only accident we had was somehow we hit a big bump. The pantry drawer door came open. It wasn't hooked very well. And a jar of peach jam fell out. <sighs> that was a mess. That was a mess. And glass everywhere. But that's the only incident we've had. So knock on wood, um, We I travel. Um, I also do a lot of powder. Uh, like tomato powder, pumpkin powder, um, all that kind of stuff. And those are in jars, and we travel with that. So far, we've done pretty good. Um, so I'm going to turn around. Somebody asked me how, since you can't stack your jars, how do you do it? Okay, those jar boxes are meant for that. You can stack um, the jar boxes. For a tightwad like me, that's too much money. Um, I'll show you something else that you can do. Save your uh, boxes that your jars came in, and you can put a label, something on the outside that says uh, plum jelly. Put all your plum jelly in the box, and then you can stack them that way. Now, right now I have ample room, and once we get rid of this other stuff here, I'll be able to get more shelving units and put in here for more in my pantry. But uh, I'm embarrassed. Brace yourself. We're going to turn around and look at my shelves. It's, it's bad, guys. And I'm embarrassed, but there we go. All right, here's my shelving units. And it's more than canned stuff, but I told you I stock up. I've got, uh, this side is typically, I'll, we'll call it proteins, beans and meats are over here. See those two gallons of molasses? I ordered one of molasses. Well, you know me, I'm a ding dong. It was one case. Whatever. I think molasses last forever. And you see all that toilet paper? Yes. That ain't nothing, folks. And there's Kleenex back there, too. I've got another room with a lot of toilet paper. I think when we retired, we thought we were going to be too poor to buy toilet paper, so we stocked up. So, worm's eye view. Um, if the zombie apocalypse hits, we've got plenty of toilet paper for you. Anyway, these are my jellies. Oh, and I've got my uh, ham and beans and pork and beans there. i got my soups. These are my tomato products. My shelves are kind of empty because I didn't have a garden last year. There's my tripod. And there's more there. Okay. That was embarrassing. You saw what a mess, an unorganized mess it is. I got to get back down here and reorganize it. So let me check my notes. I want to make sure I got all the uh, questions answered. If you have questions, um, let me know. And if I need to do another video, I will. 
or I'll try to answer um, right there. But remember, use the blue, the ball blue book um, of canning or home food preservation, whatever. And the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I gotta show you this little notebook. It's so cute. Look at that. Don't ruffle my feathers. I had a young couple that uh, they were overrun with roosters. They were raising um, some hens, chickens, and they had like six roosters. And they uh, wanted them, I taught them how to dress chicken. Now then, dressing chickens does not mean you put them in their Sunday best. We're processing it. Or, in ter layman's terms, we butchered the chickens. So we showed them how to remove all the feathers, how to clean out the insides, uh, gave me an opportunity to do a little anatomy class for the girls, the little girls that were there. And um, I used to raise meat birds and some of the chicken that's on my shelves was the meat birds that I raised. But by the time you're done, they look like a grocery store chicken and they taste a whole lot better. So guys, um, that's it for now. Any more questions, anything you think I missed, let me know. I hope it's helpful. But most of all, I hope you all will start canning and raise a garden and uh, process your own food. Um, I could probably go over some ways of dehydrating if you want me to. I'm planning to have a garden this summer. I really missed it last year. I think I'm probably going to get um, some meat birds again because I doubt we're going to be around enough to, have to raise laying hens again, which I miss a lot. Oh, and guys, I got stickers. So, um, thanks to Time Chaser. And so, if anybody wants a sticker, just email me. I'm not selling stickers. Um, I just want to share with all of you. I don't have that many, so I'll, I'll uh, well, I have quite a few, but the first four people that I hear from are going to get one of my special Christmas cards. Woohoo! Aren't you lucky? Okay. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Any questions? Let me know.